bones are practically destroyed. Lower jaw, which I did get a picture of, looks exactly like a thylacine. So I met this woman, um, blanking on her name. So she, uh, she was basically single-handedly responsible for keeping the species of the, the Highland singing dog alive, the one I mentioned. So she had pups, she was breeding them, she was actually distributing them in the, in the, in the kennel club, in the pet trade, right? In a good way, by the way, it's not a negative thing, it's a very positive thing. Mm -hmm. They were very, very close knit about who could have one and you had to have certain requirements, blah, blah. It's a good thing because it kept the species alive. Well, she, she, was a, she was an English lady and she was quite lovely, um, you know, an older woman. And she was, she was obsessed with these singing dogs, which is rad because uh, everybody should have a specialty. Um, but her point of contact that basically got all this information that these singing dogs were still alive in the Highlands was another young lady who was going to university in Port Moresby at the, whatever the university is there. She was a young local Papuan woman and she was super cool. Her name was Rose, I remember that. Um, and this is about a year and a half ago now. And so I started talking with Rose and I asked Rose, you know, a lot about like, how did you find out about the singing dog? Like, where'd you go? And she said, well, I used to go into these remote villages, right? And these remote villages would say, oh, there's two kinds of dogs. There's the striped dog and there's the singing dog. And, you know, we didn't know what any of that meant and blah, 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 blah. And so, you know, I gathered all of this data and eventually somebody said, well, the singing dogs live up on this hill. And, I, and then I went up there and I placed my cameras and I, I worked with this university and so on and so forth. And boom, they got video footage of the singing dog. I said, well, Rose, tell me about the striped dog, right? And uh, that was obviously a thylacine. She said, oh, well, they call it this name in Papua. And, you know, it means the moon tiger, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, well, Rose, tell me, like, tell me more. <laughs> and she, she's like, oh, let me contact all of the people in these villages again and like circle back to you because my focus was always the singing dog. It was never the, the striped dog. And this is where the story gets wild. And I was this close, Cookie, to getting on a plane in the height of COVID and heading over there to try <laughs> to figure it out. And so I get this like email from Rose and she says, hi, Forrest, how are you? Like all these pleasantries, super polite. And I'm like reading all the pleasantries and I'm like, cool, cool, cool. And then I get to the sentence where she's like, a man in X village has a singing dog that he caught in, or sorry, has a striped dog that he caught in the jungle a year ago as a puppy and it's now his pet. No um, and I was like, excuse me? And she's like, I've heard from, you know, and it's like Papua New Guinea. It's not like in Australia, you don't send a message on Instagram, right? Yeah. This is like a villager who doesn't speak any English, who doesn't have a cell phone, blah, 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 in the middle of nowhere, Papua. And so she's like, heard this from a friend, from a, of a friend of a friend kind of thing. So I'm like, Rose, track it down. Like, please go there and find out if this is true. So anyway, the story gets crazier. So she starts trying, like, we're, we're communicating constantly. I'm about to get on a plane in the height of COVID to go to Papua New Guinea by myself because I can't get a film crew. We can't get permits, nothing. I'm just like, I'm, I'm taking my iPhone. And uh, <laughs> anyway, sorry, I know I'm waffling on a lot, but it's kind of an interesting story. Just go, um, go. So Rose is telling me all this stuff. So I'm like, Rose, track it down. So she goes from like four degrees of separation to one degree of separate, two degrees of separation. It's her talking to somebody who's a translator that has a cell phone that's talking to the guy who owns the striped dog. Okay, so we're this close now. Like she's literally, and she's telling me about all of this. So she tracks down all these people, she gets to it. Well, it's rainy season and you can't get to the village at all, period. Like the village is totally isolated. But there's cell phone service if this guy walks way up this mountain and then can send a ping to, uh, to Rose basically. And he's the guy who's talking to the guy with the striped dog. Well, the guy with the striped dog has two striped dogs okay yes his story gets oh. crazy here. yeah he has two striped dogs and they're two puppies that he found in the jungle while out hunting in a hollowed out log now anybody that knows anything about thylacines knows that they are burrowing animals that typically would pup in hollowed out logs or caves so my mind's like getting blown i'm trying not to like jump out of my seat and i'm like holy shit, this guy might have thylacine um and so i asked rose i'm like what can I do to get a photograph? Like, all I need is a photograph. Like, I'll send a camera, I'll send a cell phone, I'll buy a cell phone for you in Papua New Guinea. You just tell me the cost. She sends me the cost. She sends this guy a cell phone. Guy disappears for like a month. And I'm like, edge of my seat waiting, edge of my seat waiting. He hasn't ripped me off. It's not like that scenario, but I just try to hear from him. Well, the cell phone tower in Papua New Guinea, and this is all true, you can look it up, went down that he used to set information with. He, the cell phone tower finally gets rebuilt or fixed or whatever. The satellites go back up. I don't know how that all works. And he, he, she hears from Rose. Well, in the two weeks between 
This is all true story, apparently, <laughs> allegedly. In the two weeks between when I said, let me buy you a cell phone and send it, um, the guy who had the dog's dog died. Another village dog attacked it, okay? Right. Um, so he had, apparent, so the two dogs thing became bold. It was only one dog. That was like a miscommunication. So I should have cleared that up. And so it was one striped dog. And he sends this, this, these details of it's got this big mouth, it's got the stripes on the back, the tail is, is strong like this. You know, he's like explaining all this in video and stuff. And I'm like, holy shit, this is it. So anyway, so I'm like, I'll send a video, I'll send a cell phone. So I, I pay for the cell phone, Rose buys the cell phone. You know, she has to hire a guy to hike the cell phone in because there's no roads, nothing. Anyway, so everything disappears for like a month. Finally, it comes back online and I find out the gentleman who had the dog Another villain in the pro in the period between when I said get him a cell phone, get him a photo, anything, and get it to me, and then I'll be on the next plane. In the period between that and when the cell phone reached him, uh, the dog died because another village and they live in villages and they're hunting dogs. And a vill another village dog attacked the dog, and the dog died. And I'm like gutted hearing this, but I'm like, all right, it probably wasn't a thylacine. Like I shouldn't be so ambitious and like ridiculous and hopeful. So I'm like, this is a weird thing to ask. I know but can you send me pictures of the bones of the dead dog? And she goes, sure, you know, they, they actually ended up eating part of it and they buried the rest. Let me get pictures of the bones. Bones are practically destroyed. Lower jaw, which I did get a picture of, looks exactly like a thylacine. Really? Yeah. Jesus, man. And that's and, and that's it, why, like, you come with the Papua New Guinea thinking that's the place. Yes. Oh, well, this was, this was, a, I had already sort of thought that, but this was only about, like I said, maybe a year ago, year yeah. and a half ago. And so I'm still, I, I know exactly where that village is on a map. I, I'm in touch with Rose. I've told her if I'm ever going to go, like, this is where we got to go. I've tried to discuss the whole trail camera thing, but the logistics are so difficult because nobody knows how to operate a trail camera. And it's not, it's not that they couldn't learn that, but there's no laptops to process the imagery mm. with. There's no way to get them in. Like, there's no scientists there. Nobody's willing to go. I mean, this is the middle of nowhere, Papua New Guinea. And it's not like, it's not like if I was like, hey, Cookie, you know, like, could you set up some trail cameras in your backyard and report back? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. these are people that, like, have never used technology. They don't, they don't know the first thing about setting a trail camera. There's no laptop to process the files with. Like, there's no batteries. You know, you couldn't mm -hmm. replace batteries. Like, they wouldn't even know how to set it or where to set it. So I've, like had these ongoing conversations with Rose about, can you get there? Like, if I send 10, 100 trail cameras, can you put them out in the area, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. And she's like, you know, I just think they're going to get stolen or they're going to break them up or, you know, maybe they'll use use them as like bowls because if you pull open a trail camera, it makes a nice yeah. bowl. Like, they're just not, it's just not going to happen unless you go. And so that was, yeah. And that was in the height of COVID and I still haven't been there for obvious reasons. And um, yeah, that's that was the story. <laughs> oh, that is wild though. That's crazy, man. Yeah. Like, I, I don't think I knew about that. So I'm just sort of like, I'm a bit like blown away by it. You know? No, I, I've never talked about it publicly because for various reasons, but because, you know, it seemed so promising. And I was like, we got to get, you know, what I didn't want to do, quite frankly, is a Neil Waters, right? We got it. We found the <laughs> island. <laughs> I know where it is, you know, and then you get there and it's some guy's brindle hunting dog or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Anyway, to this day, I'm not saying it was a thylacine, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I have I have pictures of a bunch of charred, gnarly looking bones, and I have this lower jaw imagery that looks. And there, by the way, that for people that don't know this, a very distinct jaw. So it's not like I'm mistaking it with, you know, the the village hunting dog. And everybody in the village, I had all these conversations where like it looks different to the other dogs. Its tail goes straight. It doesn't go down. It's got these ears. It's got the stripes on the back. Like all these details that were very specific to a thylacine that I never gave. You know what I mean? I was, yeah. I never led the witness by being like, does it have stripes? Does it have a strong tail? Like I never asked those questions, you know, because I didn't want to influence the response. So I was like, tell me what it looks like. And I got all these details that were very thylacine-ish.